Hey folks, welcome to yet another episode of Ann Arbor Shield. Tom Coy here with the Ann Arbor Police Department. First clue right there. There it is, there it is. Today in the studio we have repeat guests. They were here last time and they were such magnetic personalities and charismatic. <laughs> what are you laughing for? <laughs> charismatic that we had to have them back. So, so I uh, have to my right Marty and Kathy and they were uh, the first female police officers in uh, Ann Arbor Police Department. I'll, I'll let them fill you in real briefly again for those of you who missed the first episode. Much to your shame, you missed the first episode, but this is your chance to find out who these folks are. But I consider it a great honor that you would even come back after all the pain <laughs> that I put you through. No, you play well together on the set. Yeah. You know what I mean? You, you compliment each other. You compliment each other. Um, and uh, usually at this point, I tell you what the subject matter is going to be for the show, right? And you know that I'm always, well, I try to be transparent in um, what I present. So I have no idea where we're going to go. We're going to start with an interesting article, 15 Things Cops Wish the Public Knew About Policing. And I thought that was very entertaining. And Kathy's laughing to my right. No idea what that's about, but I'm sure we'll hear about it later. All right, so ladies, if we can start with you, and just again, just a brief dialogue where you started off, how long you were in police work. Um, Oh, and maybe if you want to comment on the floating head thing when you were, <laughs> I don't know. I didn't, I didn't, wasn't paying attention. I was paying attention to this. I, 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 it had nothing to do with oh, police work. Oh, okay. All right. Well, it's a bit. But maybe you want to fill the uh, audience in on what you've been doing since retirement. Well, since retired, well, I didn't retire from the police department. I quit and um, to have children, had more children, and uh, went to work at UPS. Uh, it eventually uh, started working at Wayne Westland's community, uh, Wayne Westland Community Schools, specifically at Schweitzer Elementary in Westland uh, for a year in the library, and then I went on to become uh, like a liaison at John Glenn High School in Westland. Um, did a uh, multitude, just so many conflict resolutions, worked with the uh, police, uh, at Westland Police, and um, the students and the staff, and I found it uh, very re rewarding. And I retired in '03, and then I came back in '06 and stayed until '09. So, okay. I really enjoyed my job. I'd probably still be doing it if it wasn't for the fact that it's like 400 miles a week on yeah. my car. So that's it. For somebody who commutes two to three hours a day, including a one-hour commute between here and Brighton yesterday, yeah. um, I totally understand what you're saying. Yes. Um, so you, you, if I recall, you were in parking. Initially, the parking right, department. Right, parking initially. And then you went in the police department. So yes, did patrol, was a patrol woman. Yeah. Yes. Um, so how many years did you do that? That's about seven years altogether, okay. everything. Yeah. And you've been, so you've been out of policing for? Oh, a few, long A few time. years. No, we'll just leave it at a few years. A few years. Okay. Well, we're just trying. <laughs> we're trying to get, we're trying to show you folks that, that both Marty and Kathy have been out of police work for quite some time, and they've lived in normal life since then and perhaps for those of you who are a bit skeptical um, that they would be relatively objective with some of the policing things that we talk about. Okay. Sure. All right, Kathy, you're up to Well, the I started in, um, let's see, 69. Mm -hmm. So that's when I started with the police department and I started in communications and then um, found out that police officers made more money than communications operators. Mm -hmm. And so that's when I applied for the, uh, for the academy. And fortunately, there were women like Marty who had already blazed the trail for me. I think I was in the second class that came through. And um, I stayed until, let's see, I started in 69, stayed till 76. Okay. And then went on to do a multitude of things. Very um, nicely said. I a like multitude, A non-lateral career path, okay. shall we say. And uh, right now, uh, sell real estate and love what I'm doing. Okay, <laughs> super. Um, and I recall in the first show, but I want to recap because I thought it was, it was very interesting. When we had spoken initially, and I asked, well, the first female police officers, and we're talking the late 60s, early 70s, I can only imagine the, the biases and, and um, the discrimination that, that you were up against, but everybody, in the group, including yourselves, were adamant that that was not the case. So what I want you to do is just recap for the audience, and then we'll, we'll get into the questions of the day, I promise. Um, but yeah, how did, how did that, I'm sure there were a few holdouts. There, right? were, but, there were a few uh, 
folk who didn't like women uh, they didn't in policing. Um, I think that we won them over as time went on just by working. I think there's a lot to be said for uh, the fact that people can say a lot of things, but it's what you do that really counts. Yeah. And I think that uh, we showed them that not only could we do the job, but we needed to do the job in the same uniform as the police, the male police officers, because at the time we were actually trying to uh, work as police officers with heels and skirts and a different hat and and nylons and, nylons and um, gun in the purse gun in the purse that's right and that was not helpful right. and uh, we were on the road I'm, I'm sorry we were walking the beat a little longer than the, than the guys were um, and that was because at the time they were a little insecure about us being in the same cars with male officers that something could happen but and we know uh, I, that's a, a downright so, lie. Okay. So what? So things changed, um, so and they changed rather quickly. They considering did. they changed rather quickly, and so, but we knew that there'd be. It's not like we didn't know that there was going to be anything. Sure. We did, we knew this was not going to be easy, smooth, smooth. But no, nope. it went. I think relatively. Uh, okay. Painless. So let's. I wasn't even aware that yeah. it was anything other than. Yeah. What was expected to happen. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah. See, I, I, think, I think the relatively smooth transition is very powerful considering the times. So right. let me ask you this one question, okay? I didn't, I didn't write this down, but you're going to... You know, I'm going to answer it, right? Absolutely. Okay. The transition occurred relatively smoothly, I think, from prior discussion because you had worked in parking and so you, you had somewhat of a reputation. Right, that's right before you got in here. So that, that certainly was helpful. It was helpful. On the other side of the coin, as Marty pointed out, you had to still prove yourself. And that's true with, with any officer. I mean, mm -hmm. everybody's that's looking right. to see, that's is true. this officer right. has what it takes to do the job? Right. I don't exactly. think that's ever going to change. But having said that, if you'd, come, if you'd both come in with an attitude, ad, an adversarial attitude mm -hmm. of, you oh. know what, blank you, da da da, right. you know, we're going to, I can't imagine that having gone very well for either no, either no, party for, either. for anybody no. for right? anybody for anybody you've got to be you know you've got to take the high road if you can take the high road the way for and yeah. uh, come in and just let things happen yeah. as right. they will yeah. so yeah. yeah yeah and just do your job yeah exactly that's right good I like the both of you okay we're gonna cut to a very very informative and educational clip <laughs> which I think everybody is going to enjoy here. So Tim, if you'll roll, oh, I wasn't supposed to mention your name, was I? The, the anonymous person in the back, if you could roll the clip, we'd be most appreciative. <laughs> Let it go. Oh, oh boy, oh boy, am I lost. I can't find my way home. Oh, what'll I do? Oh, wait, my mommy told me that if I ever got lost, uh, I should find a policeman, and he would help me get home. But, but, but I can't find any policeman. Oh, wait, oh, wait, there, there's a policeman. Oh, Mr. Policeman! Why, Charlie. Hello, Charlie. What are you doing here? Oh, Mr. Policeman, I'm lost, and I can't find my way home. Why, Charlie, don't you recognize me? I'm your Uncle Louie. Look at me. Uncle Louie? No, but, but you're wearing a policeman's hat. Uncle Louie never wears a policeman's hat. Well, that's part of my uniform, Charlie. Uh, I don't wear it at home when you come to visit me, but when I go to work, I put it on. That's why you haven't seen it. Look, I'll take my hat off, then you can see it's really me. Oh, okay. Oh, I see. Well, without the hat, you do look a, a little more like my Uncle Louie. But, but you have that jacket with shiny buttons and a, and a big badge and, and stripes on the sleeves and everything. No, no, no. No, Uncle Louie wears regular shirts, not big fancy jackets like that. Look, Charlie, I have a regular shirt on under this jacket, just like I wear at home when you come to visit. Huh? This jacket is part of my uniform, too, but it's still me underneath. Uh -huh. Look, let me take this jacket off, too, and show you. 
You can take the jacket off if you want to, Mr. Policeman, but I really don't think that... Uncle Louie! Yeah, see? It's me. Oh, Uncle Louie. Oh, I'm so glad to see you. Oh, I'm uh, glad to see you too, Charlie. Oh, Uncle Louie, could you please do me a big favor? Why, sure, Charlie. What oh, is it? See, I'm lost. Do you think you can help me find a policeman? What? Okay, for those of you who... <laughs> For those of you who aren't familiar, that's Sesame Street. That's a classic right there. Now, I can, my, I can, I can hear my wife because she has to watch every show. I'm not sure why, but uh, probably love or something. But anyhow, um, <laughs> she'll say, honey, what, what, that obscure clip. But I think it was powerful in that it, it testifies to something that I don't think the average person recognizes, and that is where human beings who do a job, have a career, have a profession, yeah. and we put on the uniform, but that doesn't morph us into some sort of robo-cop, at least for most of us. There's a, probably a there small percentage, yes. right? Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, there, there's names badge. for that. But anyhow, um, <laughs> um, for most of us, that doesn't transpire. And then I, I just think it's interesting to know that the, the uncle has to reveal himself, and the minute he does, then the little kid loses his perspective as to, well, this is my uncle, so where's the cop kind of thing. So, mm -hmm. anyhow. All right, any, any really, yes, exactly, take a deep breath. Wisdom, <laughs> some wisdom here with regard to what I'm trying to convey to the audience, even though I'm not doing a great job of it, but trying to convey what I'm trying to convey. Marty, go ahead. Well, I think, I think that, um as a society, we, we place people in boxes. I, I really believe that. Mm. And I think that when we place people in boxes and the box has this number of attributes and then over here, this person has this number of attributes in this box, I think what happens is that you're not open to anybody uh, being a little, uh, well, a whole lot outside of that box. And you're not looking for individualism that way. And I think that a lot of people do do it. That's why I feel it's societal. But I think what that showed was that um, this little boy has a, a vision of who this police officer is, mm -hmm. and it is not at all Uncle Louie or right. whatever his name was. It right. is not at all Uncle Louie. Right. It's not that caring individual who's going to help him out. And I believe that um, he, he, at that time, he couldn't sort that out. Right. Maybe he's too young. Maybe he's just he's a kid. He can't sort that out. I don't know. No, no, no. I got it. Yeah, yeah. No, that, that's right. Well, and another aspect of that, I, I think um, with the public's view of the, recently of police officers being so bad uh, that they seem to forget that there's always been bad cops. It's always yeah. been corrupt bankers. Yes. It's always been bad doctors. The, the thing is now with technology, you know about it. Right. Not only do you know about it, you know about it instantly. Right. And I think that it, it, yes, if there's a bad cop, you need to get rid of him. Absolutely. You need to prosecute him. I hope I'm on the jury. Right. But right. Um, they are, most of the ones, the vast majority of cops that I know and have come across in my experiences are good, caring, decent individuals. Yeah. And I think that uh, people need to remember that. Yeah. No, I, I totally agree. So my question to both of you as I retrieve my red pen that I just dropped, um, my question to both of you is how do we, I don't want to say educate people because I don't, I'm not sure education works to be honest with you. I mean, you know what I mean by saying that? In other words, what you're seeing now is police chiefs and police officers around the country being thrown under the bus at whim. I mean, at whim. The slightest little whiff of anything in, in, in your career, everything is gone. As a result of that, you have police officers, and we're not talking about Ann Arbor here, I'm just talking in generalities about the nation. You have police officers who I will assume, I don't know this for a fact, but I will assume that uh, are, are no longer doing what we call proactive policing. That is to say, uh, you know, recognizing a suspicious situation or circumstances and taking the appropriate action before a crime develops. 
So you're you're having officers that essentially are answering calls for service when you you know when you call 911. But that's the extent of it. And now, of course, you're seeing sky you know the uh, subsequent crime rate skyrocket. It doesn't I mean from my perspective, it doesn't take too much to figure out what's going on there. And yet, what seems to be the remedy, at least from what little news I can stomach, is uh, politicians and so forth jumping on a bandwagon of, you know, of, of, of again, prosecuting the police officers, you know, tightening down the hatches and yada, yada, yada. Um, and you can't get anybody to apply. Dallas Police Department, one of the largest in the country, uh, was not able to run their last two academies because they don't have enough applicants. Really? That, that, that just came out. Mm -hmm. and, and for the you know for those folks scratching their head thinking gosh it's such a good lucrative career and really I mean <laughs> I don't know um, I consider I, I consider this a noble profession as do uh, the majority of my colleagues but I would be less than honest if to tell you that if I had a son or daughter that was thinking about police work at this stage of the game I would have a serious talk with them uh, with regard to entering it, just because of the, the climate that the nation finds itself in. And um, so, right or wrong? It, it is unfortunate. And the thing is, is what I'm thinking is that um, I think that 2000, uh, well, September 11th, uh, brought such a massive uh, backing for both police and fire. Mm -hmm. I mean, there was such a tremendous outcry over what had happened and how our nation was going to somehow heal itself. And I think that after that, we had technology going on all the time. And, and I think that what happened is that, as we've seen displayed over and over again, uh, displays of, of bad policing. And I, this is just my thought, yeah, yeah. is that I believe that the people, like you mentioned, had been doing some bad policing before. Mm -hmm. I think that. Yeah, and absolutely. I think that what has happened is that people who have gotten caught have gotten caught because of the fact that they forgot that they had on this apparatus yeah, that's going to yeah, give all the news to everyone about what it is that you've probably done before. Yep, this isn't yep, your first absolutely. time. This is not this the is first not, time. This is not the I, first I time. I yep. And so what's happened is that those people are the ones who are out here making news, making and, and making police officers who are continuing to do the right thing every single day, every single minute, look bad. and. I find it, and, I, and then I find it also, it's the same kind of thing that they do with teachers yes. and, and other professions, but with police, it's, it's worse because w w when I was a police officer, when she was, we were people who were here to serve and protect. Yeah, serve and, and protect. protect. Yeah. It, it sounds so small, I think, to some people, or, or I don't know what the word would be, but serve and protect is what you're supposed to be doing. And if you don't want to do that job, and certainly if you don't like people, this is not the job. <laughs> this is not the job. This is not, I mean, if you just truly don't like yeah, people, right, right. Jesus, why would you want to right. have to go and right. interface? Well, interface. Don't, you think that's, don't you think that's the minority? I mean, for whatever yes. reason, yeah. you get somebody in here who's watched T.J. Hooker, whatever, it doesn't matter. They don't like people to begin with, and they want to have some sort of, you know, whatever. Yeah power over people, if you want to call it that. A uh, um, heavy badge. Right. But exactly. that's the minority. And it, it is. It's it, what it is. you both commented on is what I don't get is, if you go to a dentist and he's a, and he's a disaster and he, he does terrible work and blah, 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 do you never go to, well, I shouldn't, say, you shouldn't you use that example because I know people that never went back to the dentist. Yeah. Right. But, I mean, realistically, do you, do you just forsake all dentists and all dentists are, are, are sadomasochists? No, of course you don't. But, but with cops, it, it seems, and I don't know it's, if it's because people hold us up here and then, but that doesn't make sense either because you see politicians in the same. <laughs> so, I yeah. mean, we, don't get me down that road. But um, it, it's, a, it's a quagmire, and I just wish, I wish more than anything, you know, that nationally speaking, you could have a, a meeting of the minds with, re, with regard to how do we, how do we get into essential policing without without throwing people under the bus and, and right. without exactly. saying all these fancy buzzwords? Don't you think, though, that, that this pendulum swings back and forth? Because think of when we were 
this the Vietnam era. Yes. There were mm -hmm. protests. People were throwing things at us. I mean, it, we took our lives into our hands every day we got on yeah. that bus. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then things mellowed out a little bit. Maybe it's a, a pendulum that has to go back and forth, and you just have to expect it. I, I have heard that. I mean, and, I, and I've, been I around, I've been around a few years. But, um, and, and there, there are probably some truth that what's disturbing to me is when you see people in very, very high positions of authority and rank within the country mm -hmm. itself, yes. not only discouraging um, you know, assaults and, and killing of police officers, but in a very benign way of saying, well, sometimes you get what's coming to you, meaning you know the bad police officers and the good police officers, whatever. Right. And that, to me, is the most disturbing thing that that I've seen. Yeah. Um, well. And um, so, anyhow, we won't we won't belabor that. Um, how are we doing on, on time? For half time. I know I'm not supposed to do that. It doesn't matter now. Um, okay. <laughs> and you wonder why cops have a bad <laughs> <laughs> reputation. <laughs> well, real quick, because we only have five minutes, and we're going to cut to another film. But, Go ahead. You know, we, you, what you were saying, I, I, I think that um, I must put this in here someplace. Good. But way back in the day, there was something called sensitivity training. Mm. And it was um, a little bit in the police department, but it also happened when I was at John Glenn High School, and they were trying to... Uh, have teachers understand more uh, of, of what students are going through and, and a, a variety of students. And that variety of people, I think that when, when you're a police officer, you have to really, I, I know that you have to look at uh, certain criteria, only makes sense when you're going after somebody, when you're going up to somebody. Right. Uh, when you're going to have a conversation, when you're going to pull people apart from each other. But I think that if you try, if you try really hard every single day and every single episode of, of whatever is happening to keep in mind that this is just a human being and that's a human being. And if you look at it that way, I think that that, that would help to, um, for, for some people who have really negative things going on in their, in their right. minds and in their hearts, that would help if they could just remember that these are human beings. Everybody's a human being that you're going to be going up to and talking. And I, I think that some people have lost sense of that if they ever had it. I agree. And I believe and it, and that that, and, and I, and that is it's what, easy to do. and that is what we're seeing come out. I remember people being called, police officers being called jaded, remember? Way back yeah. in the day, jaded was the word. And I don't know if they're Sorry. still using that now. So it takes but, on a little bit different tone now, but yeah. yeah. But, no, it, but it, in, in other words, in other words, saying that um, they're only thinking of this person right, right. in this way. And once I once again, I go back to the little boxes, putting people in little boxes. And this is this person. This is right. all the all the things that go along with 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 this person. It's on that person right, too. Right. Right. And that's a that's just crap. Yeah. Yeah. It's, I, it is. I agree. But it, you, you both know I'm a need because you both been on it for so long. But how how easy it is to slip into it that. Right. It's a you're slippery slope. You're absolutely day right. After day, hour absolutely. after hour. Yeah. And so yeah. that is. But I agree with you. That is yeah. the challenge, right? That is a challenge. Uh, but I'm just letting my colleagues know that they have already turned off their sets, so you probably wouldn't hear the comment. But <laughs> I, I've been there, you know, mm -hmm. before um, I got into this gig. And as you work patrol day after day, hour after hour. Um, you, you find yourself just worn down. And um, so you're right in what mm -hmm. you're saying. I'm not sure how we implement that, but if I knew that, I wouldn't it, be sitting it's, it's here. Not, it's, right. not, it's not something it's not something you implement. It's something that you um, somehow have that as something that's that's repeated and if, if necessary, classes, if you see some behavior, if you see if, if a police officer sitting if I'm sitting next to Kathy and she's She's got some issues going on. I should be able to say something to Kathy. Kathy? Yeah. What's up? Right. You got issues. Yeah. <laughs> right. And, 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 and then to be able to maybe even say, I think you're going to need some kind of help. Because when police officers don't do this, right. yeah. 
don't help things, each other. Things, that's true. We don't help e if you don't help each other. That's part of what you're supposed to be doing. Absolutely. You've got to have that person's back. Absolutely. Absolutely. And if you don't, and that is part of having that person's back. Absolutely. Because I, it's also going to be your back. I, I totally agree. And we were talking about this, and then we'll cut to the film. But we were talking that, I forget who we were talking about too, but, you know, all this work, um, with regard to hiring police officers goes on, you know, the thorough background, the psychological, the physical, all these different things that, that take a week essentially. And it is by far one of the most uh, stringent hiring processes that there is um, to, in this profession. The issue, as I see it and you've alluded to, is that once you get hired in ABC department, good luck, we'll see you in 25 years. There's no, there's no you know, hey, how are you doing? Um, how did how'd you do with the you know the three the three members last night that were burned up in a house fire? Yeah. There's none of that. You just you suck yeah. it up and you keep going. Yes, well, that's true. you know what? We're human beings, yeah. and um, yeah. I'm grateful that that Ann Arbor is what it is. Yeah. But you think of major metropolis, you know, L.A. and D.C. All these that these guys and gals see day after day stuff. Mm -hmm that the average citizen, no offense, if they saw just a glimpse of that, would probably be changed the rest of their lives. And these, you know, our colleagues are doing this day in and day out without, you know, any And you know, they recognize it in the military, yeah. that post-traumatic yeah. Right, yeah. right, that, that's all come. And uh, I, I don't think that it's yet as I recognized in, I, I in the police world. And I don't know that police officers would be willing to come forward. Hey, I got a problem. Boy, that would... Oh, yeah, no, you. Not happening. No. I mean, it's not where it was when I like when I first started. Yeah. But you're right. I mean, we. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No. Right. Yeah. You know, we're a long way from there, and that's unfortunate. Yeah. Okay. So for our, what I call our halftime break, we're going to cut to this clip here, and then we'll see you back in the studio. Is that what makes me complain? What are you, what are you, what are you protesting about? No. You're not protesting. You seem to have got some type of banner here. Yeah, you seem to have got some type of banner here. Why are you asking me about the banner? I don't have a banner. Is that your banner? Yes, Can I ask you what it says on there, please? Do you know? Do you know him? Are you aware of police corruption? Yeah, I know the face. Yeah, yeah, obviously. Um, am I aware of police corruption? Yes, yeah. I'm aware of certain police corruption. Are you yeah. acting on your oath of office today? Uh, I am. I'm here as a constable. What are you here as? Uh, I'm, I'm. I'm a member of the public. Clearly. It seems to me like you're trying to impersonate yourself as a police officer. No, really. No, really. Well, you've got a police hat on that says "police officer." No, it does not. No, it does not. It does. It says police officer. No, it does not. Can you focus in on that? For no, me? you see, there are quite a few people who confirmed that he's not impersonating, and uh, this Can you just uh, focus in on the fact that that says police no, officer. No, I can't see it. Says GMP. I can't see it. So you're not willing to put your camera on that? Why I should do that? I mean, you're filming it. So well, you're, you're, trying, you're just you're just trying, trying to stitch a person up. What well, for? I'm not trying to stitch a person up. What are you doing then? I'm just trying to ask him what, uh, what's going on here. We've we'll just explained it to you. We've we'll just explained it to you. Constable six, I, don't, six, I don't want to be assaulted. Do not uh, Please, do not I'm assault myself. Yeah, you have. I you have. You have. You something else. No, you, you have. have. I haven't. That was an assault. Going too close. I haven't assaulted you at all. Sergeant. Uh, okay, I'm assaulting you. I'm arresting you on, on suspicion of impersonating a police officer. You do not say anything, but it may have questions. So it's like to hire you Anything you do say may be given in evidence. Uh, take, take do you understand my, that? Take my camera. Do you understand that? Yeah. Can I ask you to uh, drop that for me, please? Drop it. So you take my camera. Right, I'll, I'll keep on to that if that's alright. I'll do take that for it's PCSO. So what is he arrested for? Impersonation of police officer. Impersonate police officer? Yeah. It's quite interesting. This PC. Okay, I can only imagine what, what the two people are thinking that are watching this. But anyhow, all right, there, there's, a, there's a method to my madness. That's what I always tell my wife, and then she always rolls her eyes. Um, all right, so as we're watching that, I, you, we were obviously commenting about it in the studio, and uh, so I'll comment first and let you guys continue to think. But the humor of it struck me, I mean, with the whole pig mask and everything, right? On the other side of the coin, I, I thought it was a unique clip because, in my opinion, as a police officer, 
yeah, there are some there are some impersonation of a police officer taking place here. Regardless of, you know, you hear the the, the guy filming here, um, trying to escalate things and trying to get the the police officer, in my opinion, to react and, and become emotional about it, which he doesn't do to his credit. And I, and I thought uh, it was handled well, though I, I agree with Kathy that, you know, if you're going to arrest somebody, you know, and it comes to that, then you, you got to take care of business right away. Because the more you talk, yeah. the more the danger escalates. That's true. It, it is what it is. But anyhow, go ahead. Uh, we'll start with Kathy this time because poor Marty got stuck in the seat last time, so you're going to be second. But um, oh, I just uh, I'm not even sure what what it was all about. Obviously, this person was protesting something, and it was his way of showing disdain for the police department. But I mean, you you can't do that. You, the public expects and holds you to a higher standard. Which, well, we should be. Sure. But uh, and if you're going to even begin to pretend that you are a police officer, right. you're going to be arrested right, right now. Right. It's not going to so, so not going to talk about it. So what would you say, either one of you, what would you say to the person watching this and saying, this was nothing more than contempt of cop? That is to say, that's a, that's a phrase uh, that's thrown out there with regard to a, a police officer coming up with imaginary uh, charges to arrest somebody because they got in his face or called him a name or what, sure. what have you. Um, what would you say to that? This well, was, uh, the officer that handled it handled it very well. He did not. He did not get I excited. Agree. He did not. I agree. In the face, he just uh, finally just had had enough yeah. of what the guy was saying and said, "You're under arrest for right. impersonating a police officer." I agree. I agree. And I, I, I don't think it's a big deal. You right. ju you can't do that. Yeah, I agree. You know what I found interesting is the whole idea that um, we're looking at police. Uh, police officers arresting people across the nation due to the politics as it were right now and I'm finding that um, so many altercations just like when we were working um, so many altercations with police have to do not with it's because the police are there to ensure safety for everybody mm -hmm. right and yet the police are the ones who are bombarded with rocks or pellets or whatever or bologna or, sandwiches yeah whatever and the bottom line is that they were, I'm sure that whatever that guy was protesting had nothing to do with police. I agree. But this is what the person, he, he does this to confront, to, to start a, an issue, Absolutely. maybe because oh, he feels, he so? feels, <laughs> feels, feels powerless to do something about the other issue that he's really protesting. So you don't think he was protesting something <laughs> with the police department? I don't know. Well, I don't could know, but, but, I, but I do. Could have been. I, I, right. I would think could it could be. have been. I agree. Bunch of he was hoping, in my opinion, I agree with you. That yeah that he was hoping that he'd get, you know, the minority of, of police officers that we're talking yeah, about, sure. he'd get some hothead in there, yep. and, and they'd get into it. and then, Shoving. And, and, yeah, you know, and his buddy's exactly. there filming. Exactly. So, I mean, sure. made to order, but it didn't go it didn't no. quite like they thought it would. And, uh, but I think, that that's the way, I think that that's the way I'm, I just saw it again on the news this morning. I mean, it's just like I don't want to watch the news yeah. because it's showing police doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're, they're supposed to be there to protect and to stop the escalation right. of violence. Right. And when the protesters are there, they're not there because of the police. They're there because there's some issue other that's issue. not, right. it's right. other issues. And it's just so sad that it continues to be this war with the police. That's, that's a good and, and, and I think what it does is it, is it um, the police stop losing that which we had when September 11th had. It. it continues right. to erode right. that whole situation, the honor and the, 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 honor yeah. and the respect, yeah. because all of a sudden, these are the bad guys. These are the ones who yeah. are going to, yeah. you know, it's us versus them. Yeah. And I, I agree. I agree. Um, OK, so we will cut to our next clip um, right when you are. She doesn't have her cell. Kate would never take her eyes off Henry like this. They must have him. Where were we? We need a distraction.
around. Okay. Wow. wow. Isn't that something? Did yeah, you see that? I like, I like yeah. it. Disman yeah. Dismantled that gun? Dismantled yes. the gun. One, one toll and Go down on. she went. It was beautiful. Okay, yeah. which leads me to my first. This is an article that appeared recently. 15 things cops wish the public knew about policing. Number one, use of force isn't pretty. So I showed that to, to say, yeah, I mean, you know, even the... The average person would probably say, you know, their idea of what proper force is for a police officer to use is based, I mean, right or wrong, is based largely on media and TV. And how do I say it? And maybe you guys can say it better, but unless you're, you're out there in the situation of life or death or at the very, at the very least serious injury, things don't... <laughs> Things don't, don't go like they that. They don't go like that. They don't go like that, all right? That's <laughs> fantasy. That is Hollywood. It is Hollywood. Um, and I don't, and the point of the article is if a, if a police officer uses uh, physical force on somebody, there is no way you're going to make that look attractive to a bystander to say, my, 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 one karate chop and there goes the bad guy on the ground and handcuffed and put neatly away with the officer doing one of these numbers. It doesn't, it doesn't work that it doesn't way. Work it doesn't, that so way. maybe you could just comment real briefly. I mean, I know you both had your, <laughs> I'm laughing because I remember you guys straddling that guy in your skirt and all that. But well, anyhow. For those who missed it before, yes. uh, as Marty alluded to, uh, when we first started, we wore short, tight skirts nylons, heels, we had a little bobby hat, gun was in our purse, okay? And we were expected to do the same job as the men were. And when you had to get somebody down on the ground and straddle them, the only thing you could do is hike up your skirt. And that is certainly not pretty. Right, right, right. And well, see there, it's a little bit different spin than where I was going, yeah. uh, Kathy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Nevertheless, it's true, right? I mean, if, if, you're in a, if you're in a physical altercation with somebody. That's right. Um, it's not like that. It, it is, is not, not like that. that. And, you, and, your, and your frame of mind is not, is not. Um, how Dismantling a gun? <laughs> was that amazing or what? Yeah, that was Slow amazing. That was amazing. Yes, that was really amazing. Um, no, no, I but, just but don't want to die. Exactly. I just, I just don't want to die. That's, that's what that you do. Exactly you don't want right. to die. Right. You exactly. aren't going to die today. That's right. Yeah. And, and that's the bottom line. That's I mean, right. yeah. even secondary is taking this person into custody. But, right. you know, we each have, I know it's hard to believe, but we really have families and people that love us. Um, yeah. And we're going to go home to them. And I had an officer on uh, months ago who said, you know, at the end of the day, I don't care what it takes. I'm going home to my family. And I, I totally yeah. agree with that. Yeah. That doesn't, we're not talking illegal. We're not talking uh, beating. We're talking surviving an assault, coming out on top, and putting the bad uh, person away. That's what we're talking about. And, um, right. and that's, the article also points out that, um, you know, a lot of people making decisions for law enforcement nationally have never done a day of police work in their life. Exactly. And that, exactly. to me, is even scarier. You it know what I mean? Scary. I mean, that's like exactly. leading guys in troops uh, in a combat situation, and he's, and he's been, um, you know, running the, the uh, surplus depot for the last 10 years. But... Uh, yeah, it's never like that. No. I mean, I, I work midnights, and primarily, 
and usually uh, they double cars then. It's a double car. And I was usually the smallest of the two people on patrol. And people have a tendency when they are drunk or they're mm. angry or disoriented, they go for the smaller person. So I was, I was constantly, I don't know how many pairs of glasses I went through Good the first grief. six <laughs> months because the, I was always, and it never looked like that. <laughs> It was down in the dirt, that's, dirty. That's right. That's right. A and I didn't care how I got it absolutely. done as long yeah. as I got it done. You exactly. better believe it. Um, all right, another point this article makes out. Cops will go to any extreme to avoid shooting people. Um, you know, contrary to, again, what the media, what the media pumps up and uh, I, I forget, I think it's Blacklist. I swear, man, they, they might shoot 10 people in an episode. Yeah. But anyhow. I used um, to have nightmares about having to shoot someone and having to make that decision in a split second. And that's, that's the problem. I mean, you don't have time to think about it. Right. It's, it's either exactly. you either do it or you don't do it. Yep. I mean, Marty was faced with yep. that in that last situation she talked to us about. I remember that. Uh, I mean, I did fire my weapon once. And when we found the car that he was, that he'd been driving and it was a 16 year old kid, yeah. I missed him by that much. Yeah. And I had nightmares about that I'll for bet. months afterwards. I mean, I'm, I don't know about anybody else. I took it very seriously. Yeah, yeah. No, I, and I, that again, you know, it's as I'm doing the show here, I find myself getting somewhat emotional, even though I'm trying not to be. But, you know, when you're accused of, of being a murderer and you're accused of uh, uh, lying and you're accused of doing this job for all the wrong reasons, and for the most part, you and your colleagues are doing just the opposite um, for all the right reasons, for the, for the, what I say, for the honor of the, of the position and for the guardians that we are sworn uh, to be. It gets a little old after a while um, and it becomes, it, it does, it becomes a struggle to remember that that is not who we are regardless mm -hmm. of exactly. what you're saying. So. Um, I'll let you uh, comment if you want to on that same. It's just it's just a matter of you know. The, the police are are here to help. I believe I believe that um, I do too. that uh, there are people there are people who, in some neighborhoods, they're not. It was what Tanya alluded to before that there are some people in some neighborhoods who are not. They don't feel um, that sense of security right. to right. to even call the police. Right. And that's sad. It is. I think that much. that's really sad. I think that what I've seen some police departments doing, I, remember, I spoke with you about it this morning, about the Detroit Police Department oh, yeah, coming yes. on, and the whole police department is on YouTube or something, and they're, they're dancing to some tune, and it's a, you know, just, a, just a variety of officers. And it's just fun. It was fun to see. And I've seen where um, another uh, little YouTube thing where the police officers were called to a soccer game. A bunch of little kids, probably oh, 10, 11 years old, out there playing soccer. And some neighbor, which was is exactly what happened when, I, when we were in our neighborhood in Wayne, Michigan, uh, called because the kids were playing, they, these other kids were playing, you know, my kids were playing, um, what is that, uh, hockey, okay. street hockey, oh, okay. in the street of all Go things. figure. <laughs> yeah. Go figure. Anyway, but, and, you know, no cops were called on our kids, but we knew that um, some of the neighbors did not like it, even though the kids got out of the way. But anyway, back to the soccer game. Here come these two police officers. They get out of the car, and they decide they're going to play soccer, too. And they said, and if you call again, we're going to play soccer with the kids. <laughs> and, you know, and it's that kind of thing. And I believe that, that this kind of community policing has been going on long, even before yeah, we started before it in we Ann started. Arbor. Sure. And I believe that that is what has happened in so many different communities. But like I said, there's over 12,000 police departments. No, we don't know about 12,000 police departments and what they're doing on a daily basis. Right, right. We know about the shoddy behavior of some police officers some. who, Correct. if they had a really good partner, True. might have said, Kathy, you got a problem. That's right, right. right. You know? I agree. Get I agree. some help. I agree. Because yep. you know, you know. I mean, when I was a cop, I knew that there were people. I knew oh, who yes. they were. I knew yeah. who they were. Yeah. We could name them. We yeah. could name names. Never yeah. do it. You stayed Never away from it. them, tried yeah. not to get involved with them. And, right. and they were known. They were known, but they weren't fired. Right. I had, and I will always think that that was the wrong message. Right. If you're, mm -hmm. if you're, if you're bad and you're here for the wrong reasons, yeah. 
yeah. um, you then, you need, then you need to go. But exactly. th the current, I would think, the uh, current uh, approach seems to me, nationally speaking, is to say, <laughs> there's a few, so let's eradicate and judge all of them by the same, and then you're going to hire you can't. perfect, no. perfect Nobody's people perfect. from can't. where again? No I mean, perfect people. Yeah. Not going to happen. That doesn't no. work. Um, okay, we're on our last film clip, and this one actually is serious. So, oh, okay. Yeah, we'll, we'll be we'll, serious. We'll switch. We'll switch gears. But um, I wanted to end with this. So, if you're you're ready when we are. Having explained that Kennedy was breaking the speed limit by over 20 miles an hour, Coons asks to see his driver's license. Kennedy reaches for his back pocket, as if to pull out a wallet. But to Coons' horror, what he produces instead is a loaded 9mm handgun. Coons has to take evasive action and immediately retreats behind his patrol car. In the ensuing gunfight, Kennedy discharges more than 30 rounds of ammunition from two different weapons the aforementioned handgun, and an AK-47 assault rifle. Officer Coons, though, is a better shot, and despite firing off just 16 rounds... Okay, all right, it's been, I know, fun and games up to now, but um, the reason I, I wanted to end with that is um, to remind, I guess to remind uh, those who are watching that... All six? Yes, well, seven. <laughs> seven. I, I just got... <laughs> Good one. That, um, and, and you guys were talking about earlier, you know, the soccer games and the, and I, I'm all about that. I mean, that's kind of what we do in this unit. But there are men and women every day who are out there doing the job that this officer was mm -hmm. doing for a simple speeding violation or whatever it was. And very, you know, within seconds of, of coming, you know, of having to tell his wife that he's, no, you know, he's deceased and his kids and, and all that. Um, and I guess I just wanted to put that out there that it doesn't, again, it doesn't happen like in the movies where, you know, this guy comes out with a gun, shows you the gun, and now... Exactly. I mean, that was less, I'm guessing that was less than two seconds. And That's true. When, when you approach a vehicle, when you approach a person, and you're always wondering, you know, why does an officer have to be so rude or whatever? That's why. Right there is why. Because you know who you are, right? You're a soccer mom. You, you, have, you have a profession. You do this. You do that. A police officer doesn't know that. He, he had no idea who that was when he approached no. that car. Um, and so that's just reality. I'm not trying to be melodramatic. I'm just saying as a police officer, having done the job, I get it. I totally understand. So with that clip, everything we've talked about, you each have like one minute to resolve all <laughs> all the friction in this nation between police officers and citizenry with, I'm sure, with some words of wisdom that you can leave our audience. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> she was ready, man. She's yeah. like, now. Cops need to remember that um, everyone has their own issues and they have to be tolerant of that. And the public needs to understand that the cops don't know your issues. They don't know why you're angry. They don't know why you're upset. They don't know why you're speeding. So you need to explain it. You need to try to come to a resolution that is not violent. And uh, you need to respect each other as human beings. OK, I think the police officers are called to, to de-escalate a situation. I think that that's why, especially when it comes to domestic uh, problems Ooh, the worst. and um, they are the worst and they continue to be the worst mm -hmm. in the country and um, the bottom line for me is that when you come to a situation um, uh, that that needs to be de-escalated if you come in there and you escalate it's only going to get worse it's yeah. fire meeting fire and yeah, it absolutely. just builds up and so m that would be my suggestion for any police officers uh, I believe that that works I believe that it's been proven to work um, and I believe that people ought to realize that police officers have stories too. Yeah. They have stories too. They come from, they get up in the morning, they get themselves dressed to go to work, 
and um, maybe they had a bad time of it at home. Yep. They're out here, and you could at least say hello, give some, give out some pleasantries. They need to hear something pleasant instead of you know cuss yeah. words right. and right. fus and all that. Right. Right. So I think that I think that if we uh, all appreciated and, and uh, respected each other more, I think that that would be part of the answer. And it's time for the pendulum to swing back. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And I, kind of uh, concerned about what that's going to take with regard to yeah. crime rates. But anyhow, all right, so the tip of the day. I've been thinking really, really hard about this. I think I'm just going to follow up on, on, on both of what my guests have said, and that is I would, um, I would tell my uh, colleagues first and foremost that people really do appreciate what we do day mm -hmm. in and day out. I mean, I've never been thanked more and I would hope that would be true for you too, that for doing what we do, because I think the vocal um, minority have kind of run the show, but I'm, but I'm telling you, the silent majority really, really understand and appreciate what we do day in and day yeah. out. And I, and I see what my colleagues achieve. I don't really do police work anymore. Um, but I see what they achieve day in and day out, and uh, they take a beating in, in many areas of their lives for this job. So I consider it an honor to serve with them. And I guess as a citizen, I, I guess I would just follow up on, on what you both have said, that at, at the very least, you know, if you see a police officer grabbing a cup of coffee or whatever on the street, just regardless of how you feel about a cop, um, take a second and thank them for their service and just say, hey, I appreciate what you do. And I, my guess would be you're going to see a change in their face and everything else. Um, that's my two cents. But anyhow, all right. Hope we've accomplished something today. Thank Good you both job. for yeah. being here, <laughs> and uh, I, I really do appreciate it. No Thanks again, folks.